Received a broken game, gonna see if we can get it working again with open cart surgery. Well, it's a video series I've been doing for a long time on this channel. Again, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, I don't have any technical background, I don't have an engineering degree, but I'm doing the things that I've been doing since like the 90s to get some of these games working again. 99% of the time, it's just cleaning them. But sometimes I have no problem pulling out the soldering iron or anything like that to see if we can get some of these games working. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while now. To some success, there's been a few failures along the way too, but I'll still post those videos as well because sometimes I can learn something from the comments when a game doesn't work. That's when it all comes full circle. And how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Thank you for being with us for another round of open care surgery. Let's see if we can get this game working. Includes a note, and it reads, Dearest John, I hope this note finds you well. I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel, especially open care surgery, enclosed at the NES cartridge off-road. It's yours if you can get it to operate. You can actually have it either way. I've tried cleaning it extensively, but no dice. Anyway, thank you for your time and good luck. Signed, Memphis Dave Hurt. Memphis Dave Hurt, all right. Memphis Dave Hurt, I like that. Um, it was not working, however, great job with the bubble wrap. Most of the time, you just shuck it in an envelope and it's like, well, it's already broken. Ain't gonna break it anymore, huh? I don't rip into it because I recycle bubble wrap. Thanks to all my personal orders and things that I buy and stuff like that, I don't think I've actually bought in bubble wrap and I can't tell you how long. But I do reuse bubble wrap for my whatnot sales and all that, so thank you. It's a classic super off-road. I have an Iron Man Stewart super off-road. What does it say on the back here? Danny Road and Shane? Who is that, you do that? All right, well let's pop it in and see what happens. Now, for the longest time I used a Super Retro Trio 3 Plus because it was convenient, it was right next to my little uh, testing monitor and over here, and it works most of the time. Well, my old one stopped working completely, but I have a new one now. So I'm gonna use my new Super Retro Trio 3 Plus, which you can get it from Retrobit. Links for everything in my videos, always in the description. We'll try it in this, but we'll also try it in a proper top loader, because sometimes it wants to work, it doesn't, but the top loader will make it work, so we'll, we'll see. And just proving that it works, there's Hattress working, and there you see it in the background of the monitor. There we go. All right, so Hattress is working, so we know this at least works. I have an Iron Man Stewart Super Off-Road. Well, we'll see. And watch it work without even doing anything to it. I don't see anything. All right, we'll open it up and we'll have a cleaning and all that. The first thing I like to use is these one-up cards. I actually have some custom ones coming here pretty soon, but there's a fluid side and a dry side. I use the 99% isopropyl alcohol, whatever that stuff's called. Anyway, it's rubbing alcohol, basically. And these cards are nice because they fit right in there. So you don't have to open them up if you don't have to. Now, I like to open them up all the same. I mean, this is open cart surgery, right? But sometimes, just a little bit of this. And these work wonders for if you go to yard sales, if you go to state sales, thrift shops, and all that. You can use these 1UP cards and get your games working again. Is the 1UP card all it needs? The answer? Not so much. Okay. I am going to go ahead and open this up. It's not your typical screwdriver. These are a, um, oh, hold on. Righty tighty lefty loosey. There you go. <laughs> it's a 3.8 millimeter. Uh, sometimes they call it a game bit. Sometimes it's called a security bit. If you literally just Google Nintendo screwdriver, you'll probably find some of these. And again, I have them linked to my, uh, to my Amazon affiliate. Buying stuff from there means I can buy more stuff to do more videos on this channel. So, you know, assume every link in my description is an affiliate link. How about that? Not all of them are, but some of them are. All right, there's a pretty nice looking game. That's a pretty standard issue looking NES game, if I say so myself. Yeah, I'll show you the backside too. You know, we can probably clean that up a little bit with the, uh, maybe the Bright Boy. Bright Boy is this stuff. I mean, it's a metal polisher, so I'm gonna polish up these pins. There are people who will advise against this. Me personally, I've never had a game not work because I've used it. But putting anything on your cartridge, like the pins and all that, you're always gonna run that risk, right? Everything from Bright Boy to white erasers and all that. But I do like this stuff. I wouldn't mind a sponsorship, Bright Boy, by the way, but they ain't hearing that. In the meantime, it's all good. And a little bit goes a long way too. I've had this bottle. This bottle was actually gifted to me from Rock Solid Productions. My buddy Gary hooked this up because he loves it. This is the same bottle that I've been using ever since I started using it like a few years ago. And I'm just gonna do a dab a little bit there, there, and then underneath. I'm just using a Q-tip here, nothing fancy. It's not even a name brand Q-tip. It's like the Great Value Q-tip or whatever those things are called. Element LP QR. Yeah, this is, this is, this isn't a Q-tip. This is the R-tip. <laughs> it's not quite as good as Q. <laughs> but it works. All right, had a little bit on there, and I think I think they already did this to this board. It looks like it anyway. I already put the gunk on there and polished it up, and I'm using the other side of the Q-tip to clean up the gunk a little bit, and I'll show you what my Q-tip looks like after all this is done here, because it's, it's picking up, it's picking up plenty. So there's the gunk side, 
and then I dried it with this side. You can see all that stuff that I picked up. And this may not be dirt, right? This is also probably like, you know, trace elements from the pins themselves, which is why you want to use this sparingly. Well, it's like resurfacing a disc. You can only resurface it so many times before there's no more disc left. So this is like, to me, last resort. And when I mean last resort, I was like, well, it wasn't working, let's give it a shot. And then after doing that, I'm gonna take it through the one-up card again, just in case, because I don't want any residue on this board. Not for the board's sake, but my game console's sake. Imagine putting that junk back in your game console where you play your games and it gets caked in there, stuck in there. That wouldn't be good at all. And you can put it in just like that. Now, if you're using like a front loader or whatever, maybe not so much. You can put it back in the shell though. That's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and hit power on. We're gonna get some good news. Let's find out. Well, that recognizes a signal being paced, traced uh, through there. Not seeing anything yet. All right, let's, let's, let's pull out the old soldering iron, see what we can do. And all I'm really concerned about now is these two chips right here. I'm just gonna reflow the solder points and this has worked for me in the past. The solder points are all of these right here. And those are the ones I'm gonna be the most concerned about. So I'm just gonna touch them up really quickly. And usually you can see it literally just melt just a little bit. You see a little give there. These pins are very brittle. They're very fragile. Again, circuit board in the console, powering on, and a whole gray screen and nothing. Well, man, you have any ideas? I don't know. Maybe it's time I go to college and actually look into that engineering degree, huh? 